Welcome to Science Easy Tech channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about non-experimental research designs which comes under Unit 5 in the subject Nursing Research and Statistics. This video is useful for BSc Nursing students, Post Basic BSc Nursing students and students who are studying MSc Nursing. Before moving on to the topic, if you are new to Science Easy Tech channel, just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates. Let's move on to the content what we are going to discuss in this video, non-experimental research design. Already experimental research design I have posted. You can watch in our channel playlist, Nursing Research and Statistics. For statistics related videos, again a separate playlist has been created based on the request from viewers. Let's move on to the topic non-experimental research design. It is one of the broad categories of research design. So in non-experimental research design you are uh, going to see the phenomena as it is occurring naturally. It is one of the broad categories of research design in which the researcher observes the phenomena under study as they occur in a natural setting. He is not going to do any manipulation or any intervention. Suppose if you are going to do any manipulation or intervention, it comes under experimental studies. So as it is occurs, as the phenomena occurs, you are going to study the phenomena in a natural setting. You are not going to do any experiment. That that's why the name is called as non-experimental research design. In this non-experimental research, researcher collects data without making any changes or introducing any treatments. So the data obtained are analyzed and the results may lead to the formation of hypothesis that can be tested experimentally. So in this non-experimental research, researcher collects data without making any changes or introducing treatments. So the data obtained are analyzed and based on the analysis you can create a new hypothesis to be tested or you can do experimental research also based on the results what you get from non-experimental research designs and you can test the hypothesis. So in short what we can tell in non-experimental research you are not doing any manipulation or treatment on any experiment just whatever is occurring in a natural scenario or phenomena you are recording it. So what are the needs or purposes of non-experimental research design where independent variable cannot be manipulated. Here you should not manipulate the independent variable. If you are doing manipulation of the independent variable then it comes under experimental research. The studies where it is not where you cannot do experimental uh, condition where you cannot do any experiment that time you can go for non-experimental research design and for any descriptive study there is no need for any experimental approaches just you are going to assess the phenomena as it is occurring in a natural setting so the, what are all the types of non-experimental research design so for the types of non-experimental research design what you can see is a descriptive research correlational research developmental research, epidemiological research and survey research. So in descriptive uh, research, uh, correlational research, developmental research, epidemiological research and survey research. So you can um, uh, write it as uh, D square, D E C S, D E C S. Under D, you have two things. That is what descriptive research, developmental research. E is for epidemiological research. C is for correlational research and S is for survey research. So these are the types of non-experimental research design. Next to moving on to each one in detail. So here we have seen so many types no. So we will be seeing each one in detail. First is descriptive research design. Descriptive means describing. The word meaning of descriptive is describing. So the purpose of descriptive research design is to describe and document the aspects of your situation in a natural setting. Okay, so here you are going to just only assess and you are going to record or you are going to describe the situation as it occurs in a natural setting. You are not going to do anything more than this. So this descriptive research serves as a foundation for formulating hypothesis, testing of hypothesis, for generalization of findings or for theory development. Okay, so for all these things, this descriptive research design is going to help you. 
the main features are so i told it is only to describe okay they are used to observe document and describe a phenomena in a natural setting where you are not doing any manipulation that you have to keep in mind no manipulation no control group like that and all so they provide an impression of your situation as it occurs in a natural setting so whatever takes place in a natural setting for example if you want to assess the cultural practices of a particular group of community just you are assessing it and you are recording it so you are not uh, uh, doing something to change their cultural practices like that and all so they do not involve the manipulation or any treatment variables uh, nothing you are not doing any manipulation or any treatment or any intervention whatever is occurring in the real world scenario you are co copying it uh, next is they may be used to develop theories so first is theory development problem identification with current practices and what can be done uh, to improve their status then uh, justify current practices determine other practices in a similar situation so for example the cultural practices of one group of uh, community with that of other group of community so you can assess like that okay so what are all the types of descriptive design research under descriptive research design you have univariant descriptive research design exploratory descriptive research design comparative descriptive research design so here what you have three types under descriptive research design what are they univariant descriptive research design exploratory descriptive research design and comparative descriptive research design so next we will move on to each thing in detail univariant descriptive research design so here they are undertaken to describe the frequency of occurrences so for example a particular characteristic occurs means how frequently it is occurring the that you are studying in case of univariant descriptive research design so they are undertaken to describe the frequency or occurrence of a particular phenomena okay so this design does not only necessarily focus uh, on the study of a single variable only one variable you can study either only one variable or more than one variable example a researcher is interested in assessing the uh, experience of patients who are suffering from rheumatoid arthritis so rheumatoid arthritis means frequency of pain what uh, uh, how long they are suffering uh, at what time morning time the pain is more or evening time the pain is more and uh, how, what mobility restrictions they are having so that under how many times in a day they are suffering okay the frequency for how long it is persisting the duration everything they will be assessing in this univariant descriptive research design okay next is exploratory research design exploration means uh, you are exploring something you are uh, uh, going in depth with something or you are going in detail with something so it is used to identify explore and describe the existing phenomena and its related factors it is not only a simple description of the frequency of occurrence of a phenomena but is in depth exploration of a particular thing so you are assessing in-depth exploration of a particular thing so it is used to identify explore and describe the existing phenomena and its related factors it is not only a simple description of the frequency or occurrence of a phenomena but it is in-depth exploration and the study of its related factors so suppose i told no the pain is per more in morning what is the reason the pain is more after doing some activities what are those activities which is aggravating the pain and which is reducing the pain okay what mobility so what what can be done to increase the mobility like that and all you are going in depth analysis that is called as exploration example an exploratory study to assess the multifactorial dimensions of falls and home safety measures for elderly people living in selected communities we all know that falls are more common in elderly population so just we are telling falls are more common in what are all the various factors which are prone the individual to go for false okay what are all the various factors which are facilitating for false what are all the various safety measures can be taken to prevent the false so everything in detail or in depth you can study so this is exploratory research design and the third one is comparative design so you are comparing one thing with other thing so it involves comparing and contrasting two or more samples or study subjects on one or more variables often at a single point of time for example you are assessing the attitude of 
uh, attitude of a nursing program on first year bsc nursing students and second year and the fourth year bsc nursing students just you are comparing what is the attitude of first year students and what is the attitude of fourth year students or you can compare attitude of first year uh, bsc nursing students in one college with attitude of first year bsc nursing students in another college next is correlational research so this is non experimental research design where researcher examines the relationship between two or more variables in a natural setting without any manipulation or control so you are not doing any manipulation you are not having any control group like that and all or you are not having any control forces so what you are this correlation in detail i have explained in statistics so in correlation what is the relationship between two variables we are studying okay so in correlation uh, what you are doing uh, relationship between two or more variables which uh, without any intervention with the intervention also we can do but here without intervention that then only it comes under non experimental research design so what are all the main future so here we are understanding what is the strength of the relationship whether it is having positive correlation or negative correlation or strong correlation weak correlation or a moderately strong correlation positive correlation moderately weak negative correlation like that and all you can tell okay next uh, whether there is no correlation or zero correlation that also you can identify in depth you can watch in our channel playlist statistics or i'll be giving the link in description box suggested end card and i card also so in statistics we all know it is represented by the symbol correlation is represented by the symbol r and it will be varying from minus 1 to plus 1 minus 1 means a perfectly negative correlation plus 1 means perfectly positive correlation zero means no correlation like that and all so a positive relationship means uh, increase in one variable the other variable also increases for example if height increases weight also increases uh, negative correlation means if one variable increases the other variable will be decreasing for example hemoglobin level of a mother increases means low birth weight incidence will be decreasing like that uh, and sometimes there is no correlation at all uh, so there is no correlation between beauty and performance in exams you cannot tell all the beautiful girls and boys will be uh, toppers like that you cannot tell so that is what beauty has no correlation with that of um, your performance in exams so this detailed video you can watch in our statistic playlist next is type of correlational design you have prospective research design and retrospective research design retro means back okay in the past then prospective means future pros means future so under correlational research design you have prospective research design and retrospective research design so what is prospective research design a design in which the researcher relates the present to the future is prospective research design in this the researcher observes phenomena from cause to effect for example in first year uh, Uh, when you are joining first year bsc nursing you think that you have a entrance exam so in an entrance exam you have scored very good marks you are a topper in entrance exam and you have joined in bsc nursing course based on your performance in uh, uh, your entrance exam bsc nursing entrance exam since you got very much good exams uh, in uh, entrance exam i can tell this student will be performing in the four years also in future also the student will be performing very good she will she will score first rank in all the thing that like that i can tell so that is prospective research design retrospective research design in this researcher studies current phenomena by seeking information from past in other words a researcher has a backward approach in other words the researcher has a backward approach where he or she moves from effect to identify cause okay so here the same example also you can tell see this student is performing well okay she is a topper now so definitely she would be the topper in her school days also she was performing very well so she is a topper in she is a above average student or a distinction student in the past also so that is retrospective aspect you are studying so one is prospective research design one is retrospective research design so next is developmental research design so they are generally used as an adjuvant research design adjuvant means in addition with other research designs such as cross sectional descriptive longitudinal correlational research design so along with that you can use this developmental research design so this design examines the phenomena with reference to time as for example as growth and development increases how you are assessing the growth and development of a 
infant toddler preschooler so as or you can assess the attitude of bsc nursing students towards nursing program in first year then the same students when they come to second year again you are assessing the same students when they are coming to third year you are assessing and when they are coming to final year you are assessing and after completion you are assessing like that it goes off so it has some development means it has some relationship with that of time so types of developmental research design under developmental research design you have cross sectional research design longitudinal research design so under developmental research design what are the two types so initially the cross sectional then longitudinal so under cross sectional research design again you have trend studies panel studies follow up studies under longitudinal research design again it is divided into three things that is trend studies follow up studies and panel studies so we will see one by one cross sectional design in the is one in which researcher collects data at a particular point of time okay for example um, same uh, example i am giving you i am not confusing you attitude of bsc nursing students towards uh, nursing program at the same time i am doing for first year bsc nursing student second year bsc nursing student third year bsc nursing student and fourth year bsc nursing student the students will be different first year second year third year fourth year the students each batch will be different but today if i am going to do the test i am going to assess the attitude of uh, nursing on first year what is the attitude second year what is the attitude third year what is the attitude and fourth year what is the attitude this is cross sectional research design longitudinal research design longitudinal research means over a period of time for the same batch so now for freshers i am doing means when freshers i am doing this research assessing the attitude of a nursing program on uh, bsc nursing first year then the same students when they are coming to next year they will come to second year no the same test i am giving for next year then the same thing i am giving for third year the same students in cross sectional students are different eh? but at the same point of time you are doing here the same but so you have to wait for four years to complete this study that is longitudinal research design so again it is divided into three types i told now that is trend studies panel studies follow up studies so let's quickly see what is trend studies what is panel studies and what is follow up studies trend studies they permit researchers to examine pattern and the rate of changes and to make prediction about future direction based on previously identified patterns and rate of changes so in trend studies what they are what you are seeing they permit researchers to examine pattern and the rate of changes and to make prediction about future directions based on previously identified patterns and rate of changes so this is trend studies so we are telling no trend trend it is changing trend is one which changes continuously so um, trend studies suppose i the previous example itself in first year the attitude will be different second year the attitude will be different third year the attitude will be different and fourth year the attitude will be different so the trend studies moves in what direction in future direction okay so today no one mobile is uh, they have launched means uh, again after that for four months again the new model they are releasing like that it goes off as trend changing everything is changing like that so previously uh, next is uh, panel studies in this some people are involved and over a period of time they become more informative on the phenomena that the subject in trend studies because the researcher cannot only examine the pattern of change and also the reason for change so we are we are telling first year the attitude may be different second year the attitude may be different third year fourth year and what is the reason for that uh, change in attitude what are all the factors which are uh, making them to change the attitude so that you can study in panel studies so so here some people are involved over a period of time to assess the change what is the change what is the phenomena change why it has occurred next is follow up studies these are undertaken to determine the subsequent states of subjects with a specified condition or those who have received a specific intervention for example follow up studies means today i have given some today i have given some treatment to a particular patient so after after 3 months i am assessing how much improvement the patient is having that is follow up studies after 3 months after 6 months after 1 year so how much effective the thing is there so that suppose if i am giving one education program okay to change the practice of the community people 
uh, if they are undergoing open field defecation if they are asking them to use sanitary toilets so you are uh, you want to assess so after giving that program how many are utilizing the services government services so for one year for three months like that for six months for one year two year like that follow-up studies suppose government has formulated various programs so whether the program is success or not how they will be knowing by doing follow-up studies next is epidemiological research design so epidemiological research design means anything with regard to disease in a population you are assessing what is the incidence how where and all it is distributed how many cases everything in corona also we are telling how many cases how many are affected how many have died how many have recovered everything we are knowing by means of this epidemiological research studies so epidemiological studies are generally conducted to investigate cause of different diseases in either perspective researchers prospective research or retrospective research so in epidemiological research you can use the uh, either you can do prospective research or retrospective research prospective means future oriented retrospective means from the back past you are collecting the information next is types so under epidemiological research studies you have cohort study design and case control studies what is this cohort study design and case control studies cohort a longitudinal approach is used to investigate the occurrence of a disease in existing presumed causes so cohort means that uh, you are studying what is the uh, how, how a disease has occurred in your population and what is the progress of the disease okay so what is the cause for this this is everything case control studies in this design cause of a disease are investigated after the occurrence of a disease see here in cohort studies before the occurrence of the disease itself you are a uh, you are identifying what is the reason for the uh, occurrence of this disease whereas in case control disease the disease has occurred the cases are there and from them you are investigating what has led to this uh, particular disease so that is cohort studies and <coughs> case control studies case control studies helps in uh, treatment purpose cohort studies helps in prevention purpose next is survey research design a survey is a research design which is used to collect information from different subjects within a given population having same characteristics of interest so survey and all even population survey your census survey you are doing so survey is a research design you are collecting the information from different subjects nowadays no elections are means they are taking a survey they are doing a polling uh, no means they are doing pre census survey like that and all election survey pre polling survey okay even nowadays no even a film no they are taking a survey okay how much i have liked the film how much i have not liked the film like that and all next is main futures it is the process of gathering current required data from the subjects so that new information can be obtained so it is the process of gathering current required data from the subjects so that you can get some new information in survey research design information is collected from or many subjects you cannot tell only these people i will collect information from many subjects or uh, many people or many representatives you are collecting for, even if from the total population or a segment of your population you are collecting the, it relies heavily upon the validity of verbal reports in survey means whatever they are telling orally that verbal report only you are relying okay you are considering so personal interview are, are regarded as the most useful method of collecting survey data so each and every person you are going and asking so that is a personal interview so the quality of information uh, what you are getting is from the verbal thing what they are telling so types of survey research design under the depending on the nature of phenomena based on the method of data collection so in survey research design you have depending on the nature of phenomena what is occurring you have descriptive correlational explorative and comparative so in the based on nature of phenomena already we have seen this and all descriptive correlational explorative comparative well based on the methods of data collection you have written survey oral survey electronic survey nowadays electronic polling anything no whether you are accepting this thing whether you are not accepting this thing like that no they are sending a uh, links through electronic media okay so then uh, you are uh, you are accepting means you are uh, accepting you are not accepting means you are giving not accepting like that so electronic is uh, newer uh, intervention in survey electronic survey nowadays they are taking mostly so written survey oral survey and electronic survey survey research design depending on the nature of phenomena descriptive correlational explorative comparative based on the methods of data collection written survey oral survey and electronic survey so depending on the nature of phenomena under study you have descriptive exploratory comparative correlational so descriptive means uh, undertaken to describe the frequency of occurrence of a phenomena rather than to study the relationship this and all already i have explained so just i am reading it so exploratory means it is a survey phenomena and it is related to uh, factors about uh, with which what is with 
which much is not known so what is the reason for the occurrence of the phenomena exploratory you are doing comparative means you are comparing comparing the certain group with other groups one or more groups correlation means you are studying the relationship between one or more variables what is the strength of the relationship so this four things i have explained next is based on the method of data collection written survey oral survey electronic survey written survey it is the data are collected with the help of written structured tool already you have a structured questionnaire so you will ask that questionnaire and you will be uh, writing it or ticking it next is oral survey oral survey means face to face uh, or telephonically you can ask you can ask the question and uh, you can get the respondents uh, from the patients electronic survey i told nowadays through email through web google forms like that and all no through sms they are taking this electronic survey by means of electronic media um, internet etc advantages so this um, what are all the advantages and what are all the disadvantages we will see in non experimental research design they tend to be closest to real life situation because you are not manipulating anything whatever is occurring as it is you are taking it they are most useful to enhance our understanding about the existing real world scenario whatever is happening in the real world scenario you are going to take get it as it is so you can study various human characteristics which cannot be done by means of experiment okay experimental thing you cannot do natural phenomena if you want to do it you have to go for non experimental research design also that to descriptive research design is very very good in order to assess anything next is there are many situations in which it is simply not practical to conduct a through experimental so for everything you can conduct it by means of through experiment no there are certain situations which you can do only by means of non experimental research design next moving on to disadvantages the results obtained and the relationship between the dependent and independent variables can never be absolutely clear and error free so you you don't know because you are not doing any manipulation anything you are not having a control setting so in such cases there may be chances of so much of errors and you cannot tell only because of this this has occurred okay so you, if you want to tell cause and effect relationship best thing you have to go do experimental research uh, study if so in non experimental research study you cannot study the cause and effect relationship what effect the independent variable has on the dependent variable that only you cannot uh, clearly tell error is common so they are conducted for comparative purpose using non randomly selected groups you are not using any randomization if you are using randomization then it becomes what then it becomes experimental study in experimental study randomization control group uh, manipulation should be there so that and all is not there so you cannot uh, generalize your findings as that of uh, this thing you can tell this is existing this is existing like that like hope this video has given a detailed explanation about non experimental research designs if you like my video please give a thumbs up share and subscribe to science easy tech channel one of our subscriber has requested uh, me to post this video and uh, this is not only for her this is for all our viewers uh, so suppose if you are telling if you want any videos if you are giving in comment section it will be a motivating factor for us to see the for us to post the videos so your uh, simple comment gives a um, much encouragement and uh, if you are going to press like button also this video is going to show off to so many members uh, and uh, many are watching without subscribing uh, so we are doing it in an education purpose uh, for uh, many many videos and all for entertainment purpose videos and all uh, you have so much of subscribers for education purpose we are doing it as a service so we kindly request our viewers to kindly subscribe if you like it uh, kindly subscribe and keep supporting to science easy tech channel thank you friends